What's up guys, Riley here back with another video and today I'm going to be covering a topic that I wanted to cover for a long time in Excel, uh, which is how to project a full season's worth of stats for a player. And the precursor for this video, and this is going to be just a warning, this is going to be pretty dense, uh, a pretty long video, and it's, it doesn't actually include simulations by the way, so uh, there is a way you can simulate this too, I just haven't gone about doing that because I wanted to focus on the actual uh, just, just simulate or just projecting rather than simulating, projecting um, the player stats stat statically first, and then based on those formulas, then you can use them to simulate this, of course, too. But because, uh, like I've said before, you can basically simulate anything you want um, in Excel. But uh, looking at the table right now, so I, what I've done is I've actually sorted by uh, most touchdowns thrown this this season in the NFL, um, quarterback wise. Uh, passing and I was actually gonna do this for the NBA that was my original idea but then last night of course I've kind of been a bit obsessed with Lamar Jackson lately by the way so just keep that in mind but um last night uh, Lamar Jackson threw five touchdowns and is now equaled Russell Wilson's total for highest or highest amount of touchdowns thrown this season um so the precursor for this video is going to be one how can we project um season total touchdowns and two uh, who, who, based on my predictions anyways, and my ratings, is uh, projected to be the highest, uh, or finish with the highest total amount of uh, passing touchdowns this season in the NFL, um, especially between uh, Wilson and Lamar Jackson, but of course throwing the likes of Jameis Winston, Dak, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins up there too, and uh, even Sean Watson still in and around that total of 24, and definitely not you know, completely off the mark, and of course, even Patrick Mahomes, too, is, who's played two less games because of his injury, uh, still in the mix as well with 19. Uh, so yeah, who, who, um, based on my projections, um, is going to be the uh, the highest uh, lead the league, anyways, with passing touchdowns at the end of the season. But the main important, the important part about it is how to how to actually get to that total, and that's what I'm going to be going over today. Uh, so first off, and we're going to follow a pretty similar structure to the, my previous two Excel videos. Uh, first off, you're going to need some stats. So, um, uh, you know, if we're if we're doing this for any sport, which is you know the basic idea of projecting a full season's worth of stats for a player, we need uh, two very important things. One, we need stats to project, and for quarterbacks, the main stats that I'm going to be using are completions, attempts, completion percentage, yards, touchdowns, interceptions, uh, and then I'm actually going to be uh, computing uh, QBR. Or actually, I think it's I think it's technically QBR, whatever, quarterback rating QBR, one of the two. Uh, I'm going to be computing that at the end of this uh, as well. And then also uh, sacks as well. So those are the stats I'm going to be trying to project from the uh, from this or the, from this point onwards to the end of the season. And then what the basis of this is going to be is uh, one taking their stats so far and then adding on their projected stats for the remaining five games of the season, and that's going to be your season projected total. So that's going to be the basic the basic concept of of what a uh, uh, what this is right now, because obviously the NFL is 11 games in. Well, actually 12 weeks in, I believe. But 11 games in for most players, uh, meaning that, uh, yeah, I mean we're not, you know we're a decent bit through the season, so we can't just we're not projecting from scratch. Uh, that could potentially be a new video where I actually work on based on previous years how to project player performance in the next season. So how to project player growth? That's really interesting. I'm not sure if that's something I'll have to decide whether I want to do later or not because it's one of those things where that that's a uh, it's pretty dense. And it's really useful information, but at the same time, it is something I utilize for the, my job that I work at right now. And I'm not 100% sure if I quite want to divulge all that information right away, but that's, that, I guess that's a discussion for another day. So um, starting off here, like I said, we need stats. So, you know, any league, shoot my bad, any, um, any uh, you know, league or sport or whatever, you need to start off with some stats that you want to project. And that's what I've done here. With this original stats page, I'll go over columns Q through AB. Those are pretty important. I'll go over those in a little bit. And then also you need to adjust for opponent strength. That's that's important too because otherwise these those stats per game are just going to remain static. If you have average you know average yards per attempt, um, it's going to stay static every single game unless you actually adjust it for the opponent you're playing. Um, because obviously if you have that average, unless you use like a norm inverse function where you're deviating from uh, the mean based on a random number. Um, in the end, it's still going to end up with that average anyways, where uh, if you actually input the schedule, which is very important, inputting a schedule, um, it allows you to to uh, get a little bit more information behind the games that they're playing and not just, you know, not just rely on average numbers. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So obviously, uh, each team has played 11 games so far. And um, it looks like, and uh, um, 
so if each team basically has five games remaining so we're going to project those five games and uh, what these team stats are is basically going to be the same stats as the quarterbacks that i'm tracking except their um what they're allowing basically so far so rather than you know, obviously Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, for example, is a quarterback for the Cardinals. Rather than these being uh, Kyler Murray's attempts so far, these are actually the attempts that they've allowed so far this season. Um, and then also same for touchdowns and interceptions, as you can see. They've allowed 29 touchdown, passing touchdowns, and uh, they've also picked, the quarterback, picked opposition quarterbacks off six times, where if you compare it to Kyler Murray's, just to show you the difference there, Kyler Murray has thrown 14 touchdowns and five interceptions. So that's not these are not Kyler Murray's stats. These are the stats that they've allowed so far to opposition quarterbacks. Um, so then... What we want to do is we want to get some averages because uh, I, I like to, obviously we're going to go game by game. So we want to be able to project the stats for each game individually before then summing those totals up. And that's why we use the averages. Um, so first I'll go back to the quarterbacks page and uh, yeah, keep in mind, it's probably going to be a longer video. So uh, obviously very important stuff though, uh, if you want to go about doing this. So first we're going to start off the app with the averages for each stat. Uh, completions per attempt, and I am going to go per attempt, by the way. So we're going to try to project the attempts and then project the rest of the stats based on attempts. Um, so, because I don't want to do it per game, because obviously some quarterbacks have only played, you know, partial games, stuff like that, and, and been pulled or whatever, and it doesn't really give you a complete look. It kind of throws in a little bit of bias there based on playing time. Anyway, so per attempt here. Um, so let's see, Kyler Murray, for example, 60.646 uh, uh, completions per attempt, that equates to a 64% uh, completion percentage there. So that's the same idea, just basically the uh, proportion rather than the percentage. Um, and then we have attempts per game. So this is important. So like I said, we're going to try to project attempts first and then project the rest of the stats based on the attempts. Uh, so attempts per game for Kyler Murray, uh, 35.73. Then yards per attempt, 6.88. Uh, touchdowns per attempt, 0.036, and the interceptions per attempt, 0.013, and sacks per attempt, 0.09. Uh, so those are going to be the average stats. And then as you can see here, uh, I've mirrored these stats here, but just with the teams, what they allow. So, uh, oh shoot, here we go, starting here. Um, here we go. So I have completions per attempt for the Cardinals, what they've allowed, uh, 38 attempts per game, uh, 8.3 yards per attempt, 0.06 nine touchdowns per attempt, and then 0.014 interceptions per attempt, as well as 0.069 sacks per attempt. So that's what the Cardinals are allowing. Of course, we're going to bring this full circle and actually going to, we're going to focus on Lamar Jackson in a little bit here. Um, and then the next thing I've done, which is important to my calculations, is I have this, and I mean, this is not like an original philosophy or anything like that, but I have this philosophy though, and what, this is going to be the philosophy that's going to go behind these projections and kind of adjust a little bit more because, for example, let's take two really defensive teams. If both defensive or both teams that are playing in this game basically are, have very good defenses, both better than average, and let's say below average um, offenses, that um, the output of that game because both teams are below average in offense and both teams are below average in defense, that's going to be more of an exponential um, return or output um, because based on the fact that both teams are worse than average in a t or offensively and better than average defensively, um, I think that output, basically my philosophy is that output is going to be much lower than if we were just taking a linear approach uh, to that. And that's what I'm going to be basically trying to do here with these 100 ratings, and it'll make sense a little bit, if that, if that doesn't make sense at all, which, I mean, I, I completely understand if it doesn't, honestly, um, but uh, these will make sense later when I bring these in, but basically what this is doing is, I've, I've called it uh, CPA, or completions per attempt, 100, or I basically added 100 to the, to the end of them, and that's because what I do with ratings generally is, for each rating, I'm also going to divide it by the average, and then um, times it by 100, I just haven't times it, I haven't multiplied it by 100, in this scenario, that's what the 100 means, is that they're basically scaled where 100 is average, or in this sense, 1 is average, but I just still call it the 100, because that's what I've, what I've uh, used previously. So don't get confused by the 100. Basically, what it, all it is is um, the quarterbacks, um, well, in this, in this sense, the quarterbacks' completions per attempt divided by the average completions per attempt, and we're going to use that number later. So uh, currently, Murray, this would equate to a 101 rating, but basically is 1% better than average um, in terms of completions per attempt. That's all that number equates to. So don't be confused by the 100. It's just kind of what I've called it. And that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing for all these ratings. So scaling it to where 100 is average, or in this sense, 1 is average, by dividing it by the average of that rating um, from all quarterbacks. 
So as you can see here, here's an, here's an example where Devlin Hodges attempts per game only uh, 0.41, and that could be skewed a little bit by playing time too. So obviously, once again, my ratings are going to be pretty in, uh, indicative on the uh, uh, on the final uh, output of this. But at the same time, you know, ratings are very important. And once again, the process for me right here is a lot more important than the actual output. So um, be very careful when you're doing it by yourself to look for you know, potential biases in your own ratings is like right there. You see with the, Dev the Devlin Hodges, that outlier with that 0.41 in uh, attempts per game. So that's something that you need to adjust for further if you really wanted to get an accurate, to uh, like a more accurate total. Not that my, uh, not that my output is actually all that inaccurate to be, or, you know, all that skewed basically. But um, anyways, then yards per attempt 100. So uh, basically that's the idea, uh, the idea here, the same idea for all these ratings. And then we're also going to do that for the team stats too. So we have a mirror. And that's going to be the basis of the projections for each game. Now, the third thing you need besides you need the team, you need the actual player stats, you need opposition stats, and then you're also going to need a schedule. And uh, I've used a very similar schedule, actually the same basic, the same schedule basically, as I've used for this last video, in which I did um, uh, NFL as well, project projecting uh, division uh, win percentage. I've used the same schedule as that, but all I'm doing is, is basically not using the first 12 weeks and just limiting it to the, the uh, week 13 through 17 here, as you can see. And we don't actually need any scores from this because we already have the compiled stats from the other games. So all we need to do is project the, the games that are remaining and then add those totals to the uh, already compiled stats from the season, which we have on this passing stat sheet. And then this projected stats is going to be the summation of all of that. Anyway, so now here's the very important part. Uh, this is my formula of how to actually project, um, you know, a, a given a given stat for a given game. And this looks a little complicated. Of course, this is going to be a standard um, a standard usage of, of the uh, index matches, which I use so often. Um, but basically what this is going to be, and I'm going to lay out this formula actually really simply on another sheet. So basically what we're doing is we're taking... So let's see, let's just give some arbitrary number here, um, maybe attempts per game. So let's say I'm starting off with the quarterback. So let's say quarterback is Lamar Jackson. Attempts per game, this is obviously going to be completely arbitrary, 35. Uh, the team he's playing, attempts per game, let's say 32. Um, and then also we want to get that number compared to average. So let's say that 35 is a 1.01. Of course, remember, keep in mind, this is completely arbitrary. It might not even be you know accurate. And then let's say, I mean, it's most likely not accurate. And then let's say a 32 computes, computes to a 0.98, meaning that's 2% less than average, where Lamar Jackson's is 1% better than average. And what we're going to basically be doing here is we're going to take this number, so we're going to take the average of Lamar Jackson's number, and I hope this makes it, I hope this simplifies things because obviously the index match formula kind of looks a bit, uh, a bit uh, dense there. And so this is basically the idea of what it's doing right here. Uh, so we're taking the average of the attempts, and then also the average of the oppositions, or sorry, we're taking the average basically of, of both, uh, sorry, his, uh, Lamar Jackson's, for example, or whatever quarterback's attempts, and then also um, the, uh, the oppositions, uh, the, whatever the opposing team is, uh, average attempts per allowed, allowed per game. And then we're going to multiply that by the average of uh, the scaled ratings um, to average, basically. So we take the A6 and then A7. And then that's going to be the output from this. So based on, and, th and this is kind of my, this, this is basically, I'll, I'll show you an example of of what this can what, what this can basically do um, for teams that are a lot lower than average. Um, but as you can see here, the output from this is a 33.3325. And so as, all it is, is like I said, taking the average of um, attempts from the quarterback and then also the opposition um, allowed by, oh, by the way, allowed, just to emphasize that. And then multiplying it by the average of the scaled ratings to act to to average. So you have that 1.01 .01 and the 0.98. But let's let's say we have a 28 and like a not 0 0.28, 28 and then like a I don't know 20 and 26. Okay, then these numbers are going to be a lot lower. So let's say maybe a 96 and a I don't know 92. Not that that's very accurate, obviously, because there's not going to be a four point difference between the two. But it just shows. How, as you can see here, that the average, that the actual output is going to be not not within the bounds of the two um, 
actual average attempts. So as you can see here, the 26 for the team, and then you have the 20 for the quarterback. But this output here actually falls below that number as it, at a 25.38. So using static numbers without this adjustment uh, for the uh, scaled ratings, you know, you're only going to get a number between that 28 and 26 unless you're using some other adjustment where I am able to get a number outside these bounds. Or, for example, another another example could be like a 38 and a 36 where, let's say, maybe it's a 1.04 and a 1.01. Uh, that number is also going to fall outside the bounds of the uh, – oops, shoot, 36. This might not actually fall outside the bounds now. Well, it doesn't quite fall outside the bounds, but as you can see – I'll, I'll make it fall to the bounds because I want it to. <laughs> um, but as you can see here, what this adjustment is doing, it still is, well, okay, it's annoying. Uh, <laughs> but what you can see, what this number is doing, is that it's adjusting further for their relationship basically to average, or their, uh, in relation to average. Um, so basically what we're saying is if both teams are above average, that number is going to be more of an exponential increase rather than fall within the bounds of the two averages. Uh, so hopefully that's not too dense, I guess. I, I mean, it's not really, but my, maybe my explanation isn't that all, that all that great. But that's basically the equivalent to what this formula is. So this formula, all we're doing is, I'll, I'll type it out too. So we're taking um, the average of Q, a quarterback um, rating team, or basically we'll just say opposition, opposition rating and then we're going to multiply it by um, the average of the QB rating scaled. I'll just say scaled. And then opposition rating scaled. So that's that's what uh, that basically is. And that is uh, basically the simplified ver version of what we're doing here. And I think I just wanted to make that clear. So that's what that basically going to be and here's the actual formula again here's here's a look at the formulas here um, so we're going to be doing that for all of these ratings that same idea and as you can see it's basically set up the same way you can see the average here and then the average here mul will multiply by the average of the scaled ratings and the way I've done it is you don't have to set up the scaled ratings like this in another sheet obviously you can calculate it within the sheet but just to make it uh, simplified and easier to sort of digest by looking at it I've, I've actually taken the time to calculate the scaled ratings on another sheet which uh, works here in this scenario. Anyway, so then we do that for all the ratings. So for, and actually first off too, by the way, I didn't mention this, but you do want to do an index match for that quarterback. So then you can pull this quarterback stat. So all that takes is a simple index match where we index the quarterbacks from passing stats right here. So that's going to be column uh, B uh, B2 through, uh, or cell B2 through B, uh, B33. And by the way, these quarterbacks, would have, I forgot to explain this as well. I'm already getting ahead of myself. But the quarterbacks that I've used are all the projected starters for the rest of the season, basically. Uh, so, for example, Jeff Driscoll, as Matthew Stafford is still out injured. Uh, Nick Foles, as he's replaced Gardner Minshew. Uh, another good example is Dwayne Haskins, who's been named starter. Devlin Hodges, who I'm literally just projecting myself to be the starter after that last performance versus the uh, Bengals. So that's basically how I've done and, and actually, you know, decided which quarterbacks are in. So there's only one quarterback per team, and that actually allows something, a formula later to work perfectly for me, which I will explain later on. So uh, index match the, the quarterback here, then you can index match all the stats for the quarterback and then the team they're playing. So as you can see here, looking at this, we are going to be referencing that home team because the away quarterback is Mitchell Trubisky playing for the Bears. So we need to get that uh, the, the Lions basically defensive stats. We need to get those Lions defensive stats. And then obviously there's other formulas too that have included like completion percentage that are more easily calculated where you're literally just dividing expected completions by expected attempts. And then you have, um, so what, what you saw also started doing later too with this, with the way I did this is because I've done them, the way I've calculated the stats, like I said, is we're projecting the attempts, and then we're going to calculate the rest of the stats, the stats based on how many attempts they're projected to get. So all the rest of the stats, for example, yards per attempt, have to be multiplied that projected by, by that projected attempts number. And that's the only way that the formula changes throughout this. As you can see, it's being multiplied by H2, which is projected attempts. So then we're going to have uh, yards per attempt, which is simply just yards divided by attempt, obviously. Uh, self-explanatory then you have touchdowns interceptions here and this is for each each game it does this and it's also going to pull the home the home quarterback of course you have to change the team for which your opposition is to the away team as well you know obviously fairly straightforward but that's all this is so hopefully this makes sense to you guys where 
where I'm coming from here. Um, and I mean, very importantly too, like, I mean, that's kind of why I took so much time trying to lay this out a little bit simpler, uh, simpler for you guys is what this, this format of the actual projection calculations are. And like I said, we're not simulating these, so these are going to be static. Um, but this is the static version of what I have done. And then what you can do, though, is you can use this static. For example, let's say you want to do a norm inverse and simulate this. All you do is do a norm inverse, then you do that, of course, the RAND for the probability. And then you just use the, uh, let's see, that C4, you just use that as the mean. And the standard deviation, uh, you can, you'll have to, you can calculate yourself, actually, through um, the attempts for the quarterbacks, but let's just say four. Um, and then you can go like this, and there you go. You, you have a simulatable number right there with the norm inverse. As you can see, I'm hitting delete every time it re-simulates it. So that's how you do a simulation for these. And that's kind of why I wanted to focus on the static ones, because uh, you guys already could have, I mean, at this point, um, you know, you have, uh, I have other videos in which you could have uh, um, digested the whole norm inverse thing. So I don't really want to go over that again. Um, because I have gone over it, a, 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 I wouldn't say a bunch of times, but a few times already. Um, so yeah, definitely go check out those other videos if you're not, not quite familiar with what norm inverse is and how it allows us to simulate. Um, but that's basically what you can then do by taking the static number and then going and simulating the, all these stats for the season. And that's when you can get percentages like, you know, percentage to finish top and touchdowns, not just, you know, the actual static number, but the actual percent that, you know, probability that they will finish top. So for example, if we wanted to answer that question for Lamar Jackson, that's when we go and simulate them. So now we have the schedule. Now we have all the projected stats for all every single game for both quarterbacks here. Now we just need to basically add up all the stats or compile all the stats and then um, add them on to the stats uh, that they've already accumulated so far for, for the season. So the basic, form the basic formula for this is very simple. Is you're going to index match and pull the stats from that they that they've already compiled, basically. So for Kyler Murray for completion or attempts rather, uh, 393. Then we're going to add that number to. So then we're going to sum if here, and what this is basically doing is summing if the team that uh, Kyler Murray plays on the Cardinals equals the away team. So we're going to sum his away stats for those. And then we're going to sum his home stats in which the Cardinals are the home team. And that's what I was talking about earlier in which I only used one quarterback for each team. Multiple quarterbacks for each team, you'd actually have to sum it by the quarterback name rather than the team name. But it just, it's just nice and easy to be able to do the team name because there's only one quarterback per team um, in, in these simulations. Or sorry, these projections. Um, okay, so then we're basically going to do that for each stat. So we're adding up. This is kind of annoying. I didn't make this uh, centered. We're adding up the stats that they've already um, accumulated this season, um, and then we're adding the projections to those stats as well. And that's how you get this final number. So for Kyler Murray, um, projected 584.5 attempts, 374.9 completions. That equates to a 64.1 completion percentage. And what we, what we can go do is uh, ch check out his completion percentage now, and it's projected to drop 0.5% throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Matt, Ly Matt Ryan, 0.5% is supposed to drop. Um, Lamar Jackson... A bit bigger, 0.8. Josh Allen, um, let's see, 60.2. Almost, almost a full percentage point there. So you can kind of compare the stats um, so far to the uh, the uh, stats at the end of the projections, obviously. And then yards, we're gonna actually sort too. We're gonna see. I'm gonna show you some pretty interesting results of this. Um, yards. Here we go. Top, top and yardage. Jameis Winston. <laughs> interesting, interesting projection there. But I mean. He has been pretty prolific in terms of volume. So as you can see, if we sort by yards here, uh, he's actually second overall behind Dak. He is projected to pass Dak and uh, actually um, beat him by about 100 yards. So Jameis Winston, not really the quarterback he would have project, uh, projected at the start of the season, but he has been putting up pretty monster stats so far this season in all categories, including interceptions. And that's another thing I wanted to show you here, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, yards per attempt, I think it's going to be Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. And this is another sort of flaw with the design I've used, is that uh, Tannehill has played a lot fewer games. And, of course, he's been excellent in the games he's played so far for this season for the Titans. But because of the fact that he's played uh, less games, there's going to be less data on him and also you know, resulting in less accurate um, projections because ultimately his average for stats is going to probably be unsustainable. Obviously, that completion percentage crazy high, 72.7. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have the likes of, well, where'd he go? 
Um, Derek Carr up at 71.2%. So, I mean, it really depends on the offense that you're playing into. And Kirk Cousins at a 70.8, but that West Coast really benefits that completion percentage for Derek Carr, of course. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we have yards per attempt. Ryan Tannehill leads that. Then Kirk Cousins, Patrick Mahomes, that, Cres that, that uh, Prescott there. And then touchdowns. This will be interesting. So this is the question that we we're asking at the start. And, of course, I showed you the whole process about how to get to it, how to project all the stat the static stats for each game. Um, of, course, of course, based on you have the quarterback means for the stats. You have the uh, opposition. And you're also going to use those scaled ratings, too. And uh, this is the result we get. We get a 36.5 projected touchdowns number for Russell Wilson, 35 for Lamar, 33.9 for Jameis. And right now, Jameis <clears throat> is actually third overall at 22. So it does make sense. So we just hold that, that third overall there. Uh, Kirk Cousins, whose numbers this season are just looking outstanding at this point compared to like the first game of the season against the Falcons, if you follow the NFL, where he, what, he had like 12 attempts or something like that, 30, 13 attempts. Um, anyways, 30.4. <clears throat> For um for Kirk Cousins there, 29.8 for Dak, Jimmy G, 29.2. So pretty interesting to see all these numbers here. Dwayne Haskins, hmm, uh, 4.2 touchdowns, 13.8 interceptions. I mean, obviously probably going to be uh, um, hurt a little bit by his lack of game so far this season. And, uh, you know, that's going to skew things, like I said, but at the same time, <laughs> kind of funny nonetheless. Anyways, uh, so touchdowns, Russell Wilson is a projected leader. Interceptions, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Jameis Winston, a whole eight and a half interceptions higher than anyone else in this uh, uh, projection here. Uh, Philip Rivers following, I would say, close behind, but that's just a lie at 20.5. Uh, then Baker Mayfield, 18.8. So he's projected to finish on 21.1 touchdowns, 18.8 interceptions. A pretty stark drop off from last season, but ultimately, obviously, this is not a... Uh, the football and NFL opinions column, but I think that uh, it uh, may come down to coaching a little bit more than than we suspect. Uh, sacks. This this one should be pretty interesting too. Uh, 53.6 on Kyler, 52.6 on Russell Wilson, which is surprising, I guess, lack of O line. Um, and then 51 on Jameis. Those are your top three there. And then quarterback rating. This will be interesting. Ryan Tannehill, of course, in his limited time, it is going to be skewed a little bit, but. Uh, uh, 115.3, pretty solid rating for him, and this is actually the quarterback uh, rating formula right here that I'm using, so it is the official formula that uh, is used, you know, by everyone, basically. Um, and then Kirk Cousins, uh, 114.7, Russell Wilson, 112.4, Lamar Jackson, 109.3. So if we're going to pick an, an MVP from this selection here, I think it would have to go close first to Russell Wilson, and uh, reason being... Well, there's a few reasons here. And just statistically, though, if we're going to look at the important stats, like here's an important stat, um, yards per attempt. And we're going to sort by Lamar. And actually, we'll do the M the MVP front runners, I'd say. So we'll go like maybe Lamar we'll throw in there for sure. I think he's probably the front runner at this point, if I can find his name. So Lamar, Russell Wilson. We'll throw Deshaun Watson in there because he was, he was in it for a bit there. And then maybe the likes of even like Kirk Cousins. Because at this point, I mean, his projected numbers are very solid, too. Just as a bit of a comparison, can I find him? Yes, I can. And then maybe even just throw in, like, Patrick Mahomes and, you know, compare the last MVP. Um, and actually, you know, we're going to throw in Tom Brady as well because, you know, Tom Brady. Um, so here's just a little bit of a selection from the top quarterbacks um, potentially this season. So these are going to be what are just the important stats. And we'll throw in yards, too. You know what? We'll throw in completion percentage, too. Um, so first we'll sort by completion percentage. This is just a little, and this is kind of a side note because obviously, you know, this, I've already kind of graced over the whole process to get to this point, but this is, this is also kind of, also kind of showcasing the, uh, the fun you can have at the end of these things. You know, once you're done projecting all this stuff, you can go through and sift, sift through all this information like this. So, uh, Kirk Cousins topping completion percentage, Russell Wilson third, Lamar Jackson though, very, very impressive this season with the 66.1%. Uh, then total yards, it's actually going to be Brady that edges this one. Russell Wilson second. The yards per attempt, this one's pretty important. Uh, Kirk Cousins, 80 or 8.68 projected. I mean, he really could come closer to MVP this season than you guys uh, may, might think. Um, then Patrick Mahomes, unfortunately, only played 14 games, so kind of skewed his numbers a bit, but uh, still pretty solid numbers overall, 8.59 yards per attempt. Uh, Russell Wilson coming in third. So as you, there's kind of a theme here where Russell Wilson, and and if we actually even take away all these these other ones too and just, just compare Lamar to Russell, which I think at this point is fair enough because they are pretty much the two front runners. 
Um, completion percentage, Russell edges it yards, Russell uh, more than edges it almost by a thousand. Uh, of course, not, you know, not uh, taking in Lamar's rushing, rushing yards, but pure quarterback per, um, com a comparison here. Yards per tenth, Russell's going to edge it. Touchdowns, Russell edges it. Uh, interceptions, Russell, Russell, I'm going to say edges it, but, you know, pretty handily wins that one. Sacks, of course, Lamar Jackson's going to edge that one. Then quarterback rating, Russell's going to edge that. So, I mean, I'd say based off of these projections, uh, Russell Wilson MVP. Um, so we'll see how it ends up playing out. But right now, obviously, it's hard to it's hard not to buy into the Lamar Jackson hype. And uh, it's it, I mean, it was so entertaining watching him grow from last season and that you know that option heavy um, offense that they had to. I mean, they're still very run heavy, but they're so efficient this season. The Ravens uh, very exciting to watch anyway. So those are going to be the two that we are focusing on there. So uh, Russell Wilson ends our question with. Uh, topping Lamar Jackson by 1.5 projected touchdowns and that's of course uh, you know it's calculated by adding his touchdowns so far this season to uh, his projected home touchdowns and projected away touchdowns so that's how it's all done hopefully you guys enjoy this little video I think it's going to be in my little I think it's going to be pretty long um, in comparison to normal but I think it was worth it I think it was worth going over all this stuff uh, remember this this little calculation that I used to I think it's pretty important for uh, projecting team or player stats and uh, yeah, remember the basic, the basic, uh, you know, the structure of, the, of this of this model here. You're taking the player stats, um, adjusting for the opposition stats, and then you're gonna also input the schedule too, so you can accurately, op you know, because we actually need to know who the opposition is to adjust by those opposition stats. And then out comes these uh, projections right here, which is pretty pretty cool to see. I think so. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this little video. I'll be back soon. Definitely leave suggestions. Um, in the comments for more videos you'd like to see because I am taking those into account here and I think it's something pretty uh, beneficial for me because you know I love kind of testing myself as well. It was pretty interesting making this model. I think it took me about an hour in total. So realistically, it's I mean it makes it might seem pretty uh, dense like I said, but at the same time it's it's really not uh, terribly um, you know long and and uh, I guess strenuous to do. Um, the, I guess the toughest part is really locating this data, and I think uh, using the likes of you know Pro Football Reference or you know Basketball Reference, all that stuff, the Sports Reference stuff is great. Definitely, uh, you know, look into that stuff for for basic stats like this, and you can go about doing this yourself. So, like I said, hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.